안녕하세요. KHK. Greetings. I'm Dr. Kang Chunggyu of K Dental Clinic. When you do implant surgery, in more cases, rather than having a lot of bone, there's a lack of bone due to various types of bone loss, and you need to place implant even in those situations. In order to place an implant, which is successful and has good prognosis, you need to conduct the GBR. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about what needs to be considered for successful GBR, and I'm going to talk about bone graft as well as membrane. First, the contents. Let's look at the overview and principles of successful GBR. The two main parts of GBR, clinical cases, and then I'm going to finish. Why do we need GBR? It is well shown in this image. As you can see, in number 16 and 26, implants are placed. The implant in 26. When I first learned implant, I only focused on placing implant where bone was. And the implant in number 16, I did appropriate GBR and completed the case. As you can see, in number 26, Implant was placed deep to where the bone was, crown to root ratio was bad, and the patient suffered from constant screw loosening. The patient came back for to treat that. In number 16, it looks very stable and there were no major complications. In other words, when there is lack of bone for appropriate implant placement, you need to do GBR first and then place the implant and complete prosthesis for good long-term prognosis. This is at second surgery and this is the image. If you fail to do appropriate GBR, you can get these disastrous cases. And for successful implant placement, appropriate GBR is essential. There are multiple ways you can apply GBR technique clinically. You can apply them in extraction socket defects and also in defects in immediate implant placement. In general, you can use them in fenestration and dehiscence defects as well as well as localized ridge defects. You can do lateral and vertical ridge augmentation. You can also do sinus graft, a sinus perforation repair, and peri-implantitis repair. As you can see, in number 16 and 17, there was chronic periodontitis. The patient wanted implant and the patient had a lot of fear and immediate implant placement was planned and appropriate GBR was also planned. This is before surgery and clinical image. After extraction, two implants were placed and a, this is before GBR. After that, this is the image. Healing was done nicely and the x-ray and clinical image show prosthesis completion. After extraction, if you do appropriate GBR, you can get nice implant results. In number 47, due to advanced periodontitis, the patient came in for implant. There was a lot of bone resorption, so implant placement seemed difficult. For staged approach, GBR was planned. This is after GBR. You can see that the resorbed situation has been improved so that we can place an implant. In such a case, there's no issue in placing the implant and completing prosthesis. There are appropriate GBR in areas where implant seems difficult. You can make it a more easier situation.
The basics of GBR. It started off with GTR. In other words, guided tissue regeneration. As you know, due to periodontal disease, bone resorption and periodontal pockets can be formed after keratinic membrane is used to block a connective tissue and epithelial tissue and selectively grow cells deriving from periodontal ligament resulting in the regeneration of periodontal tissue, periodontal ligament, cementum, and alveolar bone. And this has led to GBR. This stands for Guided Bone Regeneration. It's a surgery that promotes bone regeneration by using a membrane that is placed on the bone defect in order to secure space and block other cells, except for bone cells, from entering into the bone defect. As mentioned, DGTR is related with natural teeth and GBR is related to dental implant and it is in relation to reconstruction of alveolar bone. Let's look at the terminology. Repair means the damage to function or architecture is not fully recovered and it just means wound healing of a tissue. On the other hand, regeneration is a full reproduction or reconstitution of the damaged area. R of GBR means not guided bone repair, but it is guided bone regeneration. It regenerates it. And the purpose of GBR is to get full regeneration. Let's look at the principles for successful GBR. In 2006, Wang and others came up with a PASS principle for successful GBR. The first P stands for primary wound coverage. In other words, with tension-free suture, you get primary wound coverage, and that is a condition for successful GBR. A stands for angiogenesis. In other words, adequate blood supply is necessary. And if necessary, intra marrow penetration should be conducted. The first S stands for space, space creation and maintenance, and exclusion of unwanted cells. Space creation and maintenance. So that stands for the first S, and the second S stands for stability of wound and implants. In order to make a solid bone, you need to fixate a membrane stably. As you can see, after you apply the membrane, using bone tack, the membrane is fixated. First, primary wound coverage. Let's compare the cases above and below. There is a stark difference. Below, there is nice primary wound coverage and healing is done nicely. In the case above, there is wound dehiscence and secondary healing was done, which has better GBR result. Obviously, the one below where primary wound coverage occurred nicely, solid and sufficient amount of bone has been formed. In the case above, in the area where bone graft was done, bone resorption has occurred to a certain level. In order to have successful GBR, primary wound coverage is necessary. In order to avoid soft tissue dehiscence, you need to meticulously handle soft tissue and have a strict intrasurgical infection control. Another important point is to do periosteal releasing incision for tension-free flap procedure. Let's look at periosteal releasing incision. 
By pulling the flap as close to the mucal gingival junction's apical direction, lift the flap and periosteum of the flap which covers the membrane, pull it intactly and then make an incision on the periosteum. This allows for tension-free suture and allows advanced flap as well as primary closure. The precautions you need to take when you use a blade, use a new blade for this technique and make incision up until mesial distal vertical incision so that the flap easily extends without tension. The blade should be parallel to the bone surface and the flap should not be perforated. You need to look carefully in order to prevent such from happening. Second, angiogenesis. If necessary, make intramural penetration. I don't do it for every case, but in the lower posterior where the lower bone is very thick, and if necessary, you can punch the cortical bone and do intramural penetration so that blood supply is available. Next, you need to maintain and create space. In order to do this, you can use bone tack or titanium mesh. Space can be created and maintained that way. Another point, when you use resorbable membrane, in order to avoid membrane collapse, use sufficient amount of bone fill material. By doing this, you can stabilize blood coagulum and support the membrane. You need to use su sufficient amount of bone filling material for this. Finally, wound stability. In order to make solid bone, after bone graft, apply membrane. If the membrane moves around, it becomes difficult to make a solid bone. So in order to do this, you need to fixate and stabilize the membrane. Bone tack or bone screw, I normally use perio steel suture. In other words, Dr. Boozer's suture is used to fixate the membrane. Two main parts in GBR. It can be divided as membrane and bone filler. I'm going to talk about membrane. Membrane's role, it makes space and stabilizes blood clot and cell occlusiveness to prevent epithelial tissue or connective tissue from coming in and it also holds graft materials the requirements of membrane first it needs to have biocompatibility and it also needs cell occlusive effect epithelial tissue or connective tissue should be blocked and if exposed it should also prevent exposure to bacteria. Additionally, it needs to create and maintain space. It needs to secure space for bone regeneration. These traits are necessary. Tissue integration. It needs to integrate with adjacent tissue and stabilize the wound. And it should be easy to manage. This is an image that we should all remember when we do GBR. In gray is the bone defect and the white part is the membrane. The membrane should fully cover the defect and it should cover over 2 millimeter of the bone defect. It should not interfere with in primary wound coverage and it should be slightly apart from flap margin. Always remember this image. When you apply membrane, please stick to these three principles. <laughs>
When you put in the membrane, as you can see, if you continue to put it in using tissue forcep, it might crumple. So you need to hold it like this fully and then put it in so that it goes in without crumbling to a desired position. When you want to take it out, pull it from the palatal side and you'll be able to apply it with ease. When you put in the membrane, you need to hold it fully and use tissue forcep and put it in. Please remember this. Membrane. It can be divided into resorbable and non-resorbable membrane. Let's compare the two. Resorbable membrane, it lacks stiffness and it has problem in space maintaining. Therefore, graft materials needs to be used sufficiently. Conversely, for non-resorbable membrane, because there is stiffness, it can maintain space well, but biocompatibility is lacking and there is risk of exposure and it has possibility of inflammation. According to literature, when you use non-resorbable membrane, the risk of exposure is 16% to 42%. Membrane can be divided into resorbable and non-resorbable. I normally use collagen membrane for resorbable membrane. Uh, I use oscite or cytoplast for non-resorbable membrane. I use cytoplast and os builder for titanium membrane. Let's compare oscite and cytoplast. Oscite uses porcine collagen and cytoplast uses bovine collagen. Osguide has very nice adhesion and fixation and cytoplast, it can be maintained for long term. Another benefit of Osguide is it's very economic. One thing you need to pay attention is that in order to maintain appropriate stiffness, you should not irrigate it. If you irrigate it, it becomes very mushy and it's very difficult to handle, so you should not irrigate it. Non-resorbable cytoplastic can be divided into two. One, it has titanium and the other doesn't. The one with titanium can maintain space better, however, it is slightly more expensive. Precautions when you use cytoplast the embossed surface is in contact with the wound and it stabilizes the wound. So the embossed surface needs to be towards the tissue and the smooth surface needs to be towards the bone. Os builder. It's a non-resorbable titanium membrane. It is a 3D customized titanium membrane. Titanium membrane, you need to use bone tack, but os builder, it doesn't require it. It's a titanium membrane that you don't need to bend or cut for space maintenance. It has 3D structure and it has excellent space maintaining capability. The membrane that I use. I normally use reservable membrane with good ROI. However, if the number of walls around the defect is very few, and if there is very severe bone defect, and if it is necessary to create and maintain space, I use non-reservable membrane. And for a thin biotype, I use reservable membrane because it has good biocompatibility and helps in preventing wound dehiscence. Next, I'm going to talk about bone filling material. As we all know, bone filling material can be divided into autogenous bone, allograft, xenograft, and synthetic bone graft. The allograft that I use frequently is SureOS, and for xenograft, I use AOS, for synthetic bone graft, QOS. If you look at the mechanism for making bone, there's osteogenesis. 
In other words, the bone you put in becomes bone. The bone graft turns into bone. There's only autogenous bone for that and osteoinduction. You induce bone generation. The bone you put in, it doesn't change immediately, but you encourage bone formation. Autogenous bone and allograft has that effect. What else? There's osteoconduction. In other words, you maintain space and you help formation of bone. That is osteoconduction. Except for autogenous bone and allograft, everything helps in osteoconduction. Autogenous bone helps in osteogenesis, osteoinduction, and osteoconduction. In some allograft, like DFDB, osteoinduction is possible, and the rest contributes in osteoconduction. It creates and maintains space to encourage bone formation. The rest, allograft, xenograft, and synthetic, Bones contribute in bone formation in this way. Let's look at the bone fillers. There are requirements for that. First is high osteogenic potential. It needs to accelerate new bone formation. Another point is it should maintain the created volume. It shouldn't be resorbed too quickly and it should be maintained for a long term. Ironically, the two have contrasting concepts. In terms of bone regeneration, autogenous bone is good, and xenograft lack efficiency. However, in terms of maintenance, xenograft and synthetic material is better, and autogenous bone and allograft falls behind. For effective GBR, next to the exposed fixture, you should use autogenous and allograft material and induce bone regeneration. And uh, on the outside, you use xenograft or synthetic material that does not resorb quickly and maintain space. In other words, use sandwich technique or, or layered graft. This is the effective way to do GBR. I cannot show you everything, and I'm going to talk about fenestration, dehiscence defect, and localized ridge defect cases, of which I did GBR. On the left, on the apex, you can see that there's defect. This is fenestration defect. And the defect on the coronal side, this is dehiscence defect. The prognosis is better in fenestration defect, and it's more difficult to de treat dehiscence defect. A 60 years old female patient, and number 47, after extraction, bone resorption was severe, and it was difficult to place implant. When I opened the flap, bone defect was severe and vertical augmentation was required. I used a sure os and after I used a membrane, I used a resorbable membrane here and suture was done. Interrupt suture and horizontal internal matrix suture was used. This is after three months. Primary closure was nicely done and healing is very nice and when you open the flap you can see that a solid bone has been formed on the x-ray this is before extraction and after extraction healing it was difficult to place implant so gbr was conducted and it was rather successful and it's not difficult to place implant now Implant was placed and prosthesis was delivered. Resorbable membrane was used to do vertical augmentation and the implant was placed well. Root caries caused the root fracture and extraction was done. This is a 40 years old male patient and after extraction the patient experienced a lot of discomfort and wanted implant as soon as possible and after one month implant was planned. <laughs>
When the patient came back a month later, this is the image then. There was a lot of bone loss. On the buccal side, thread was exposed and GPR was necessary. Allograft to sure os was used and os guide was applied. In order to fixate os guide, Dr. Boozer suture was done and after that, this is the healing process approximately two months later. Nice primary wound coverage was done. When I opened flap for second surgery, I saw that GPR was very successful. I connected healing abutment and completed secondary surgery and after that I delivered prosthesis. Two years and six months later, you can see that it is well maintained. This is before GBR. Appropriate GBR and membrane was done and we got this result. If we can do this, we can make a very favorable, very good prosthesis. X-ray image before surgery. This is after implant placement, after GBR, and after prosthesis delivery. CT image on the buccal side bone defect has been well treated. Two years and six months later, we can see that it is well maintained. In uh, upper right quadrant, in number four bridge, there was a problem and tooth number 13 was extracted. The root was very deep, so it was difficult to do immediate implant placement. In number 13, socket preservation was done. 14 and 15, immediate implantation was done. After extraction, flap was reflected. As you can see, there was very thin bone. There was a lot of bone resorption, so implant placement was very difficult. In number 14 and 15, which augmentation was done. And in number 13, where the tooth was extracted, ridge socket preservation was planned. First, I used allograft sure os, and on top, non-resorbable cytoplast membrane was used. Suture was done. Membrane was removed two weeks later. If I were to do this case again, I would not have used just one membrane. In the area where socket preservation was done, I would have done open membrane technique and removed it two weeks later and for number 14 and 15. In order to maintain it longer, I would have done it separately, but I just used one and I think I could have done better. Anyway, I removed it and this is five months later. This is when I tried to place the implant. So GBR was rather successful and I placed the implant. This is after implant and additionally bone graft was done. One stage surgery was done. This is how I did the treatment. I did, formed a palachi flap and did crisscross suture and after that prosthesis was delivered. As you can see, before GBR and after GBR, it was very difficult to place the implant here, so GPR was done appropriately, and now we can see that there's no problem in placing an implant. Let me tell you a couple of tips for successful GBR. You, when you do releasing incision for primary closure, you need to use new bone blade and before bone graft, if you do it after, the bleeding can get excessive and the bone graft material can get all over the place. So before that, you need to do releasing incision for primary closure. When there is severe bone defect and if it is essential to create and maintain space, you should use non-resorbable membrane. In thin biotype, 
you should use reservable membrane which has good biocompatibility. Exposed to fixture around that, you should use autogenous or allograft material and on top of it you should use xenograft or synthetic material that is not observed for a long time. Layer graft should be done. It is very difficult to just the place implant without additional procedure. There's barely such case. And among additional procedure, GBR takes a huge percentage. Because the importance of GBR is increasing, I've talked about GBR and I hope you were able to organize your thoughts on it. Thank you for watching.